One of the more underrated phones released last year was the Motorola Droid Turbo. It was one of the better phones released last year due to its incredible spec sheet. You had a phone that had a quad HD screen, a formable camera, a great overall per performance, and of course, it's one of the best in its class when it came to battery life. No other high-end smartphone could really compare in that regard. Now with successor, they aim to continue the trend while also evolving its design. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here. You're watching our video review of the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. All right, let's talk about battery life. The Droid Turbo 2 gives you above average results. It's not as quite as long lasting as last year's unit, but still better than most phones out there. Now that's partly because they've endowed it with a lower capacity 3760 milliamp hour battery versus the original Droid Turbo's 3900 milliamp hour battery cell. And we can combine the fact that the screen size has increased to 5.4 inches, you're not gonna get as much longevity. In our usage, we're able to get roughly a day and a half out of a full charge. In our battery benchmark test, it achieved a mark of eight hours and one minute, which is still kind of lagging behind last year's unit, which is timed at 10 hours and 42 minutes. Despite that, Motorola has improved the charge time of the Droid Turbo 2 using the included turbo charger. It only takes 82 minutes to bring it back to full capacity, which is pretty fast. And unlike the Moto X Pure Edition, this handset actually has the convenience of built-in wireless charging. One evolutionary change that we really like with the handset is, that, is now that you can design the phone via Moto Maker, so it's highly customizable. Now when we look at the overall design, it's not as aggressive as last year's model. You have basically a flatter looking chassis with less of an arch back casing, and you also have a thicker metal trim bezel outlining the handset. And you could, it's obvious that it takes some of its cues from the Moto X Pure Edition. And using Moto Maker, you could choose the colors, the accents, and engraving, and also the type of material. The one we have here is a plastic textured one with a triangle pattern. You could replace it with something like ballistic nylon or even leather, but of course it's gonna incur you know, a higher price point. Just like the Moto X Pure Edition, it comes with an LED flash with the front facing camera. and also has a dual front firing speakers, but the configuration is a little bit different. It's actually placed below the display, both speakers. Now it does feature the same water resistant construction from before, so it's safeguarded against minor splashes, but it's not entirely waterproof. And lastly, the phone just has that built like a tank construction and feel to it. Well, there's a reason why it has that built like a tank feel. That's because it features a shatter shield display, which makes it very resilient to drops. It's able to absorb impacts, even the harshest of impacts, concrete floors, hard surfaces, it's gonna be protected. What we have here is a 5.4 inch quad HD AMOLED display. So 1440 by 2560 pixels. It's actually comprised out of five layers. And even when it's dropped several times, there's no impact to its touch sensitivity. And the panel itself maintains its, uh, you know, its look. It, it's very resilient to impact. Now, naturally, you have great details just because of Quad HD resolution. You also have a pretty favorable 6850 Kelvin color temperature. However, though, as far as the panel goes, it's very oversaturated. Colors aren't unrealistic. You get overblown colors most of the time. And the peak brightness output on the, on the manual setting achieves only 315 nits. That goes up to 445 nits when you put in automatic mode and you're using it outdoors, it's still a little bit on the weak side. And due to all those five layers that comprise the entire display, it kind of subdues its iridescence in a bit, but it's really nice that you have peace of mind knowing that even if you drop this handset, it's not gonna shatter. Running through the software, there's one thing that becomes abundantly clear, and that's Verizon adds in a lot of bloatware to the experience, unfortunately. Now looking at it, there's, it's a slightly customized experience that's running on top of Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. You'll see subtle differences here and there. For example, the arrangement of the app panel itself. You have these larger size fonts. You have also the typical widget on the home screen that's found in many of the Droid handsets that shows the time, date, temperature, and battery level. And there's no multi-user support here. But luckily, it does share many of the same Motorola enhancements that we enjoyed using on the Moto X Pure Edition, like Moto Sys, Moto Actions, Moto Display, and Moto Voice. They're all very meaningful to the experience. 
you do see a lot of those Verizon branded apps here and there on top of these time killing games like Panda Pop. Overall still, the experience is straightforward. It's not really overwhelming. It's pretty, pretty useful. And it's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chip, so a pretty affordable processor. It's combined with three gigabytes of RAM. It gives it plenty of speed and finesse. And in no instance did we see any lag. It's pretty snappy with everything, including graphics, uh, graphics processing. It's able to deliver some pretty zippy speeds. So you never ever have that feel of lag or slowdown. As we've seen already with the Moto X Pure Edition, Motorola has made some great strides with its camera, but here with the Droid Turbo 2, it's still a solid effort on their part, but it's not on par with the elites in the space. What we have here is a 21 megapixel Sony IMX230 CMOS sensor in the back with an f2.0 aperture lens, includes face detection autofocus, and you have also a dual LED flash on board, and tops out at 4K video recording. Around the front, you have a 5 megapixel wide angle camera with, of course, that LED flash, which is pretty useful if you're taking selfies in low lighting conditions. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the shooting interface, it's the same thing we saw with the Moto X Pure Edition. It's pretty light, very few shooting modes, and no manual controls whatsoever with it. But we still enjoy the fact you could do that double twist gesture to launch the camera at any time. Now, the camera itself handles scenes with good lighting pretty well. You get some solid looking details, however, colors tend to be rather bland in tone. Now, under low light, we do see a heavier presence of noise in our images, and generally, you have softer details. And unfortunately though, the handset seems to be prone to blurring, so you gotta make sure to keep steady or just stay still for long periods of time. And when we look at the video recording footage with its 4K capture, it does exhibit a lot of noticeable artifacting elements in the shot, so it's rather distracting, and it's not quite as sharp as we'd like. Phone calls are handled pretty well by the Droid Turbo 2. You get strong volumes through both the earpiece and speakerphone, so even in noisy conditions, no issues whatsoever. However, the voices on both ends of the line sound a little bit on the artificial and robotic side, so you might have to repeat yourself a little bit more often. It's only natural to draw compares, comparisons against the Moto X Pure Edition. When we look at that, it does have a higher outright cost than its sibling. It starts out at $624 and you get a 32 gigabyte version. Whereas with the Moto X Pure Edition, it starts at $400, but you only get 16 gigabytes with its storage capacity. Now both handsets are similarly spec, but you may only get longer battery life and also that benefit of built-in wireless charging here with the Droid Turbo 2. The Shatter Shield display, of course, gives you that peace of mind and showing that it won't break if you drop it by accident, even on purpose, and very few phones can have that type of ability. Now there's a lot of other compelling phones out there in the market that are priced around the $600 to $700 range, so they might have some good arguments going for them. And you may really want to go with the Droid Turbo 2 above all for battery life performance and its drop resistant construction. Now if those are two things that aren't really high on your list, you might still want to take a look at the Moto X Pure Edition.